You guys are freaking out since I made that video on iron. Most of you being concerned the carnivore diet is going to corrode your liver with said iron. Let me make this clear. I am still following a carnivore diet. The only reason that happened in the first place was because I deviated from a natural eating pattern. There are three big things I forgot to mention yesterday. One, this is the same if not more of an issue on the standard American diet. Keep in mind guys, the amount of iron in red meat is not an issue. All of the foods we're eating on a daily basis, the cereals, the bread, mostly grains, processed foods are fortified with iron. Your body has been stuffed with iron since you were a baby, since you were in the womb. And our bodies aren't getting enough vitamin A, retinol, enough copper, enough zinc to regulate this iron. It's not really an issue specific to the carnivore diet, although there are some things that can manifest themselves. Most Americans are overloaded with copper because of a lack of meat in their diet, whereas carnivores are overloaded with zinc because of a lack of plant foods or liver, just animal foods that are copper dominant. I'm sure you guys have heard of vegans getting nauseous from taking iron pill supplements, and this is because they are literally poisoning their livers with iron. A vegan diet doesn't have enough zinc or retinol to regulate iron, and they're looking at the wrong solution, as vegans typically do. The second thing I forgot to mention is that this issue is kind of specific to men. Women release iron in their periods, in their menstruation. According to Google, men have a 24-fold increased rate of iron overload disease compared to women. So speculatively, your chance as a woman isn't even 5% of the chance that a man has these issues. The third is zinc to copper ratio. I mentioned it yesterday without explaining it. There is supposed to be about 8 to 15 milligrams of zinc for every 1 milligram of copper in your diet. These are antagonistic. One reduces the other. I might have mentioned this in my nutrient synergy video without going in depth. As if you follow a natural animal foods based diet, it shouldn't be an issue. First thing you need to do is get your ferritin levels checked. And if you're concerned about your zinc to copper ratio, you can get a hair mineral analysis. The problem with these blood tests is that they aren't indicative of tissue levels. Ferritin does not measure the amount of iron in your liver. You have to get a scan of the liver. I was talking about my ferritin numbers in the video yesterday. That was more to mark inflammation in the liver as opposed to specific iron status. Hair mineral analysis is not measuring the tissue levels of zinc and copper, but it's really the most accurate thing. You know, you can't take a living biopsy of a person. These are unfortunately our two best options, but still not 100% reliable. It's why you have to listen to your body and see how you respond to certain foods. A lot of you guys were commenting saying that my ferritin was too low at 18, you know, recommending it should be 50 to 400, which is the standard blood recommendation range. But these conventional standards aren't aware of liver iron storage and that certain people need to get their ferritin very low to deload iron. If you look at the new up-to-date hematology information that many doctors aren't aware of, the main goal for iron overload patients is to get the ferritin below 50. You go on any forum, any doctor discussion, they're giving phlebotomies until the person's ferritin is below 50. I know some of you guys are aware of Morley Robbins and his root cause protocol. I heard about him originally from the person that pointed out my iron overload. Morley Robbins talks about things like babies being born with large amounts of copper and iron in their liver because human breast milk doesn't contain iron and copper. So nature intends the baby to use these nutrients in early stages of life. But the standard American diet is overloaded with copper, resulting in zinc deficiency, and the baby cannot produce ceruloplasmin to regulate iron. This ties back to nutrition being a very complex topic. You know, foods contain natural forms of vitamins, minerals, elements, and fatty acids in the correct ratios, and if we aren't aware of that style of eating, which has been skewed, by nose to tail carnivores, by pseudo intellectuals that are trying to get you to eat a certain way to buy their products to fit their agenda. And I swear, you Ajanis Rotards are the most arrogant people. You morons are literally still trying to give me advice and you're all still wrong. I read the book, it doesn't make the diet correct. You guys are as bad as vegans at this point, you really are. You're just making up stuff. Uh, some of you guys brought up PKD, 
which is a carnivore protocol by Paleo Medicina, but their recommendations aren't correct. I've had about half a dozen people come to me from PKD with severe health issues. A portion of you brought up anti-nutrients, suggesting that things like phytic acid and oxalates might actually be helpful in inhibiting the absorption of iron. Unfortunately, this actually makes the situation worse because anti-nutrients don't really inhibit iron. They inhibit other minerals like copper and zinc, which you need to use to mobilize iron. The only thing that has been shown to inhibit iron absorption is calcium, and that's only in the digestive tract. So dairy, really the only plausible option for most people. And if anything, foods like coffee, high anti-nutrient, oxalates, make things harder to figure out from a mineral balance perspective. One ironic thing is that the carnivore diet will actually reverse the iron issues that a standard American dieter is suffering from. So for a few years, they'll replenish their zinc deficiency, mobilize iron out of the liver, but once that zinc to copper ratio goes out of balance again, in this case because of high zinc, the liver will become overloaded with iron again. And even if your liver is full of iron, there is genetic variance. Just like there's people who you know drink beer, alcohol every single day and live to 100, and some people die of liver failure at 40 years old. You know, you could have very bad liver issues from a fraction of the amount of iron that someone else is okay with. Everyone has a different tolerance and I happen to reach my individual tolerance. One other thing to be aware of is that there hasn't really been anyone that's mentioned this. The only person that has points A and B connected to my understanding is Morley Robbins. Uh, I reached out to him trying to get him on my podcast. Uh, we'll see what happens. but. Uh, guys, be prepared for all the other carnivores riding on my coattails and talking about this. But at the end of the day, keep in mind, I was the person who brought this issue to realization and they either didn't know about this or they were sweeping it under the rug. So, you know, who knows what they're going to say to justify it now. Uh, I'm really curious, you know, when, when this type of stuff comes to light, everyone jumps on the bandwagon, starts talking about it, and they shouldn't be talking about it in the first place because... I've been doing experiments related to this for the past two years. These people are going to watch my video, do some Google searches, and come up with their own hypothetical scenario. You guys haven't been following the carnivore diet for seven years. You guys haven't experienced this issue firsthand. You should really refrain from talking about this. I'm talking about every other carnivore dieter. There are very few people to be qualified to talk about this topic. Even some hematologists aren't. I didn't mean to scare you guys with this, and this is just part of me being objective and sharing my understanding of nutrition. You know, the takeaways from this should be a standard American diet, a vegan diet, the average person in America is likely suffering from this, not just a carnivore dieter. It is weird though in a sense that the carnivore diet can manifest itself in the opposite scenario. As we said, standard American diet, zinc deficiency, carnivore diet, copper deficiency. Uh, so guys, definitely check out you know my book, The Ancestral Indigenous Diet, as well as my carnivore video course if you want to learn how to follow a diet that will alleviate potential issues. And you can also check out Morley Robbins. Uh, he has all of that work related to zinc to copper ratio, ceruloplasmin. This makes EMF sensitivity much worse. So normally when you're in a high EMF environment, you know, a person might get a headache, a stomach ache for a period of time, and most people can recover. But when you have iron overload in your liver, when your body is full of imbalanced metals, it makes it much worse. It stresses your body's antioxidant pathways. Uh, so if you're one of those people that are very sensitive to EMF, that can't sleep well, this might be down your alley. All right, guys, so I rewatched this recording and I read through the comments again on that other video. I don't think I was very clear about what to do to actually solve this. And you guys are inquiring about fasting. Fasting does not solve this whatsoever. If anything, fasting will make this worse. Your body needs certain nutrients and it needs to restore its proper balance. You need to stimulate bile. And the only way to remove iron from your body is to give blood. There's a reason hemochromatosis is a disease that can cause liver failure. Your body has no mechanism to remove iron once it's overloaded. The only way is to remove it from the bloodstream or there are certain heavy metal chelators uh, that you can take intravenously. Either way, you're injecting yourself with a needle. I hate to break it to you. The way I actually fix this and the way I've been fixing this is I've used various copper supplements. 
I've been implementing liver when I can tolerate the larger amount of vitamin A and mainly reducing my iron intake, even though the amount of iron from red meat isn't actually considerable in the big picture of hemochromatosis of iron overload. It's still helpful. I've noticed that I do react if I eat too much red meat, uh, particularly later in the day. If you guys need an actual protocol to do this, you can reach out to me via email. If you haven't encountered this yet and you don't want to, as I said, check out my book, check out my carnivore video course on frankdestefinal.com to develop an understanding of nutrient synergy. Thanks for joining me, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.